Now, first of all, let us get the relation between normal components. And to get that relation, we will utilize magnetic Gauss law. We already seen what is magnetic Gauss law. Isn't it? In the previous lectures, we have seen magnetic Gauss law. It is very simple. The total magnetic flux that is coming out of any closed surface is always equal to zero. Or in simple words, magnetic Gauss law is the closed surface integration of B. Magnetic flux is nothing but the surface integration of B. And Gauss law is applicable over closed surface. So in simple words, the closed surface integration of B equal to zero. So Gauss law demands B that is magnetic flux density. So let us consider the normal components of B that are Bn1 and Bn2 and to utilize the Gauss law let us construct infinitesimally small cylinder at the boundary surface as you can see from your screen. Assume that the surfaces of the cylinder are lying on the both the sides of the boundary surface and this infinitesimally small cylinder it has negligible height h and very small infinitesimal surface areas of the top and bottom surfaces. Also assume that its one surface top surface is in medium 2 and bottom surface is in medium 1. So as you can see from the screen Bn1 is passing through the bottom surface and Bn2 is passing through the top surface. And as the cylinder is infinitesimally small it is almost stuck to the boundary surface. So these Bn1 and Bn2 they are normal or perpendicular to those surfaces, isn't it? So let's apply magnetic Gauss law over this cylinder. The total magnetic flux coming out of this closed surface cylinder or the closed surface integration of B equal to zero. You know that magnetic flux is nothing but the surface integration of B. And as Gauss law is applicable for such closed surfaces, the total flux is closed surface integration of B. Now my dear, our closed surface is cylinder. So it consists of three surfaces, top, bottom and curved surface. So the total flux coming out of this cylinder will be the will be three surface integrations for top, bottom and curved surface. But you know my dear, we can neglect the flux coming out of curved surface or we can neglect that curved surface because in the construction we said that this infinity, this cylinder is infinitesimally small, having negligible height. So let us discard that curved surface. So we are left with only top and bottom surface and the total flux or the total closed surface integration is written as you can see from the screen. Just recall the previous lectures of surface integrations or Gauss law. So you will be able to write with no problem, isn't it? As this cylinder is infinitesimally small, as the surfaces ds are infinitesimally small, we have dropped the integration sign. And for the bottom surface in medium 1, differential surface vector ds vector and bn1 vector, they are opposite. Hence theta is 180, hence cos theta is minus 1. And for the second surface, which is in medium 2, ds vector and normal component of flux density b and 2 vector they are in the same direction hence theta is 0 hence cos theta is 1. So whatever you can go back into the lectures of surface integration or Gauss law the total closed surface integration or the total flux coming out of this cylinder is written as like this and this is equal to 0. So what we get? Check out the screen carefully. What do we get? We get Bn2 equal to Bn1. That means normal component of magnetic flux density B in the medium 2 is same as the normal component of B, the normal component of magnetic flux density B in medium 1. Bn2 equal to Bn1. So I can say that the normal components of the magnetic flux density B are continuous. Again I am repeating. I can say that 
नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ मैग्नेटिक फ्लक्स डेंसिटी बी आर कंटिन्यूस कंटिन्यूस मींस सेम द नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ बी बी एन वन इन मीडियम वन एंड बी एन टू इन मीडियम टू दे बोथ आर एग्जैक्टली सेम सो नॉर्मल कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ बी आर एग्जैक्टली सेम आर कंटिन्यूस